Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn about trends in the periodic table of elements. Now if you remember from an earlier video, we talked about Dmitry Mendeleev, the creator of the very first periodic table of elements. And in that video, we talked about how Dmitry stated that if you arrange the atoms in order of their increasing atomic weights, then we start to see recurring patterns in their physical and chemical properties. And that's what we're going to talk about today, people. Today we're going to talk about the different trends in the periodic table. All right. So let's first start off talking about atomic size. All right. It says right here that the size of an atom is measured by its atomic radius from the center of its nucleus all the way to its valence shell or its outermost shell. All right, and the thing about atomic size is this. If we take a look at a periodic table of elements like the one you see right here, then the size of atoms decreases as you move from left to right on the periodic table and the size of atoms increases as you move from top to bottom. So what does that mean? Well, if we take a look here, Atoms will have a tendency to get smaller as you move this way on the periodic table, and they will have a tendency to get bigger as you move this way on the periodic table. So what ends up happening is that your really big atoms are down in this little bottom left corner of the periodic table, and your really small atoms are going to be in the top right corner of the periodic table. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, uh, an example here. It says to order the following elements from largest to smallest. And we have cesium, we have nitrogen, we have chlorine, we have calcium, and we have aluminum. And using the trend that we just talked about here and using your periodic table that you have in front of you, we need to order these atoms uh, from largest to smallest. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so if we take a look at these five atoms here, cesium is going to be right here. Here is cesium. So this one right here is going to be our largest of the, uh, of the five atoms that we have here. So from largest to smallest will be cesium. After cesium, we have calcium. Calcium is right here on the periodic table. And then we're going to have nitrogen. Nitrogen is going to be, let's see here. Nitrogen is going to be right here on the periodic table. It's covered by the little arrow. And then we have calcium. We've already got that covered. And then we have aluminum. Aluminum is going to be right here on your periodic table of elements. Okay, so using their location, we have to predict what the, uh, the atom sizes are from largest to smallest. And we already know that cesium is going to be the largest because it's in the bottom left corner. All right, next up, if we take a look, is going to be calcium. Calcium will be the next largest atom on the periodic table of these five here. Next up, we're going to have aluminum, right? We're going to have aluminum next. Next, we're going to have nitrogen. And finally, we're going to have chlorine as our smallest of the five atoms listed here. So if we order the following elements from largest to smallest, we'll end up with cesium as the largest, calcium as the next largest, aluminum, then nitrogen, and chlorine as the smallest. Okay, so here's the trend for atomic size. Atoms decrease going from left to right. They increase going from top to bottom. Or another way of looking at it is on your periodic table, atoms get smaller going this way and they get bigger going this way. Let's take a look at the next trend on the periodic table of elements. All right, the next trend on the periodic table we're going to talk about is ionization energy. The amount of energy required to remove a valence electron from an atom. It says right here that larger atoms have a tendency to have lower ionization energies while smaller atoms have higher ionization energies. And if we think about this, this makes sense. Let's suppose we have a small atom, right? So here's the nucleus and here's a really tiny uh, atom with its valence electron right here. And we compare that to a very big atom. Let's suppose we have a really big atom here. Here's its nucleus and here's its valence electron right here, okay? Keep in mind that the nucleus of an atom is positively charged. And so there's an attraction between the nucleus of the atom and the valence electron that sits here. And there's an attraction between this positive nucleus here and this outer or this valence electron with a negative charge out here. All right, so there's an attraction that exists here and there's an attraction that exists here. But the attraction between these two particles, the nucleus and this valence electron and this smaller atom, is going to be greater. So it's going to require more energy to remove this valence electron because it's closer to the nucleus. Whereas right here, this valence electron 
is further away from the nucleus, so the attraction between these two is going to be less, and therefore it's going to require less energy to remove this valence electron. So smaller atoms have a tendency to have more ionization energy. It's going to take more energy to remove this valence electron from this atom since this electron is closer to the nucleus here. Whereas in larger atoms, it's not going to require quite as much energy to remove this valence electron since it's further from the nucleus of the atom. And if we take a look on our periodic table of elements, there's a trend with ionization energy. It's the exact opposite as the atomic size that we just talked about. Okay, so as atoms get smaller on the periodic table, their ionization energy increases. Okay, so ionization energy increases going this way. The arrow has kind of been cut off here, so I'll draw a new one. So ionization energy increases going this way. That is to say that it takes more energy to remove a valence electron because atoms get smaller as you go this way. And if you take a look, as you go down the periodic table of elements, the ionization energy is going to decrease. It's going to take less energy to remove a valence electron as you move down the periodic table because those atoms are increasing in size. Okay, so the trend for ionization energy looks like this right here. If we take a look, uh, the, uh, the atoms that have the greatest ionization energy will be in the top right corner, excluding the noble gases since they don't really react uh, with anything. So fluorine is going to have a really high ionization energy. And the atoms on the periodic table of elements that have really low ionization energies are going to be down here because they're the big, bigger atoms on the periodic table of elements. So if we wanted to order the following elements from largest to smallest ionization energy, and we're given the same atoms that we just saw in the previous example with atomic size, then it's going to be the exact opposite, right? It's going to be the exact opposite. The ones that have the largest ionization energies are going to be your smaller atoms, okay? So chlorine is the smallest atom here, so it's going to have the lowest, uh, I'm sorry, the, the greatest, the largest ionization energy. Next up, we're going to have nitrogen. Next after that, we're going to have aluminum. After that, we're going to have calcium. And then after that, we're going to have cesium, right? Cesium is right here on our periodic table, and it's going to have the lowest ionization energy since it's the biggest atom. And chlorine is the smallest atom of these five here, so it's going to have the most ionization energy. All right, so ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove a valence electron from an atom. And the larger atoms have lower ionization energies, while smaller atoms have higher ionization energies. So ionization energy and atomic size are inversely proportional. As the size of an atom increases, its ionization energy is going to decrease. All right, let's take a look at electronegativity next. All right, electronegativity. It says electronegativity is the ability an atom has to attract electrons toward itself, right? And it says metals are typically less electronegative than nonmetals. So electronegativity basically refers to the ability an atom has to pull electrons toward itself, okay? And if we take a look at our periodic table, where are the most electronegative elements? If we take a look at this trend here, the most electronegative elements are going to be in the top right corner. Fluorine, for example, fluorine, which is right here, is the most electronegative, most electronegative element. And if we take a look down here in the bottom, francium is going to be one of the least electronegative elements okay so electronegativity is the ability an atom has to attract electrons toward itself and electronegativity and atomic size are also inversely proportional so as atoms get bigger on the periodic table i'm sorry as atoms get smaller on the periodic table going from left to right their electronegativity is going to increase and as atoms get bigger moving down the periodic table their electronegativity is going to decrease, okay? So electronegativity and atomic size are inversely proportional. So it says right here to order the following elements from largest to smallest electronegativity. Well, if we're gonna do that, then what we take a look at here is uh, which of these atoms is the biggest and which of these is the smallest? Well, chlorine is the smallest, so it's gonna have uh, the highest electronegativity followed by nitrogen, followed by aluminum, followed by calcium, and last but not least, we'll have cesium. 
as our least electronegative atom of these five right here. All right, so understand the trend of electronegativity, understand what it means, understand that fluorine is the most electronegative, it's the Justin Bieber of the periodic table. It attracts all those little electrons toward itself. Bam, right there, fluorine and francium is the least electronegative atom on the periodic table, or one of the least electronegative. All right, let's look at atomic, I'm sorry, ionic size or ion size next. All right, it says right here, ion size. It says when atoms lose or gain one or more of their valence electrons, they become ions, and their size changes. It says cations are smaller than their neutral atom counterpart, while anions are bigger than their uh, neutral atom counterpart. So as cations lose, uh, remember cations are positively formed ions formed when that atom loses electrons. So when an atom loses electrons or loses electrons, they have a tendency to become smaller. And then when atoms gain electrons, uh, like an anion does, they have a tendency to become bigger. So if we take a look at our periodic table, in gray here we have the size of these different atoms here, and then in red here is the size of the cation. So if we take a look, here's lithium, a uh, stable lithium atom, and when it loses an electron, right, it's going to become smaller, right? It's going to become a little bit smaller. Same thing with rubidium. Here's the rubidium, stable rubidium atom, and if it loses an electron, it's going to become a little bit smaller. Whereas over here, here's a, uh, here's a stable Here's a stable chlorine atom, and when it gains an electron and forms an anion, it's going to get a little bit bigger, okay? So if we take a look at our periodic table, you can kind of see a trend as to what's happening. And if we're asked to order the following elements by largest to smallest uh, ion size, and we're given these right here, then it looks like chlorine is going to be our largest ion, since it's a negatively charged ion. Right, then it looks like we're going to have a uh, rubidium, right? It tells you right here that the size of a rubidium ion is uh, 166 p.m. Rubidium is going to be the next one, followed by oxygen, followed by calcium. And last but not least, aluminum will be our smallest ion here. Okay, so... Uh, Pause this video, take a look at this, make sure you understand right, that cations uh, have a tendency to be smaller than their uh, neutral atom counterpart, whereas anions have a tendency to be bigger than their neutral atom counterpart. All right, so in summary, it says right here that a relationship exists between the size of an atom, the amount of energy to remove a valence electron, and the ability it has to port electrons to pull electrons toward itself from other atoms, all right? There's a relationship that exists between these three, right? For example, atomic size is inversely proportional to the ionization energy and the electronegativity of atoms, whereas the ionization energy of an atom is inversely proportional to the atomic size, but directly proportional to the electronegativity, and the electronegativity of an atom or of atoms is going to be inversely proportional to the size of that atom and directly proportional to the ionization energy. So this is an important concept to understand that as atoms get smaller on the periodic table of elements, right, as they get smaller going this way, the ionization energy increases and the electronegativity also increases. And as atoms get bigger on the periodic table, it looks like their ionization energy is going to decrease and their electronegativity is going to decrease as well. All right, so atomic size is inversely proportional to the ionization energy and the electronegativity. Ionization energy is directly proportional to uh, the electronegativity over here. As electronegativity increases, so does, the ele uh, so does the ionization energy. As the ionization energy decreases, so does the electronegativity. So here are some periodic table uh, trends in a nutshell. If you like what you see here, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I hope you guys found this helpful.